All right, so now we're inside the Scenera platform. On the right-hand side, we can see the viewport. We can visualize some of the results that we're generating here. Here we can see actually the outcome uh, of one of the parts we're gonna take a look at building up today. On the left-hand side, we can see the canvas, and this is the area where we actually start to construct our workflow. And here you can see we've gone ahead and given this a nice title I'm about doing a manufacturability study with cognitive additive. Um, the nice part about Scenario is we can document the process, but and not just create the process at the same time. So really enabling reuse uh, of this uh, documentation by other folks within our organization or maybe days or weeks or months down the, the line when you have to go back and revisit something. So we're gonna start off by taking a look at what it takes to do a topology optimization inside Scenario. Of course, with any good top off, we're gonna start with some loads and boundary conditions. And the nice thing here is we are actually gonna start importing a lot of this data from an Excel file where this is stored externally to drive a lot of the uh, inputs to our process here. So we've set up a few nodes to go ahead and automatically construct that. We've created our own custom node here that we've imported in an include node to generate some of those loads and battery conditions for us. We'll uh, also import some material data. In this case, we're gonna use a pretty standard aluminum material for our optimization process. And of course, we're starting with pad geometry, in this case, importing directly some parasol geometry of course, inside Scenario, we have the parasol kernel for all of your modeling operations that you may need to do further downstream here. So once we've gone ahead and modeled our part, we're gonna, or imported our geometries, let's say we're gonna go ahead and look at some different design spaces that we've got here, in this case, the non-design spaces, but ultimately we need to mesh our geometries. Here we've, uh, given this part a nice tetrahedral mesh that we're gonna use inside hexagon amendate when we start to uh, run the optimization process. So as we go further downstream, we can take a look at constructing our uh, geometry here for the optimization process as well as the simulation process, right? So that's the nice part about what we do inside Scenario with constructing workflows is that as we construct these workflows, we can use components to algorithmically do not only optimization, but simulation, simulation with different solvers because we're working in a bit more of that agnostic uh, format. In this case, we start to define some contacts because we do have a, a region here where our load's gonna be applied um, that has a contact with a bearing there. So we'll step through this further. Now we're constructing some RVEs, of course. Uh, getting more accurate loading conditions by using RVEs is really important. Uh, another step that we can take in the process here. Uh, in this case, I, I don't wanna dive too far into the generation of all the loads and boundary conditions, but we can maybe let's uh, step through and get towards actually uh, the optimization step. So here we start to define some of those loads and boundary conditions where we've imported data from our uh, Excel file that's driving this uh, analysis. And as we step through that, we get finally towards assembling our model for uh, at least the pre-optimization validation. So let's go ahead and take a look at, at the results that we get out here. In this case, we are uh, running this analysis uh, with our built-in uh, finite element solver, but of course we could use ANSYS, Mechanical, Abacus, MSC Nastran, NX Nastran, Autodesk Nastran, OptiStruct, any of these uh, simulation tools that you may be most familiar with are generally accessible with inside the Scenario platform. So after we've gone ahead and done our validation, we're gonna go and do the optimization. And this is where they really fun part happens. So we've got a, a few outcomes here where we're using hexagon amendate to do the optimization process. We can see the geometries we get out here in the end, looking actually quite nice and smooth, but we have a few options that we wanna run through, right? So we could have this really sparse looking geometry, or we can have this denser looking uh, component here. 
And now we really need to start to understand, you know, which of these is going to be more cost effective for manufacturing? Is it actually going to be the part that's lightweight and uh, kind of slimmed down? Or is actually the, the one that's a little bit bulkier actually going to have uh, be a more manufacturable design in the end because of some of these components coming from the manufacturability analysis? Thank you.